Hi, grade three and four. Here we are ready to do more work on our second full week of school from home, watching the fabulous Mrs. Stolt on your videos. Um, one of the things to remember, I spoke to a few of you about it uh, over the weekend. Um, I think one of the things I'd like you to do is let's work on being independent workers, okay? That's what I expect you to be at school here. Um, so find a spot. Where are you going to work? Find a spot that's quiet where you can be not interrupted. Um, not that you have to sit down and do all of your work at one time, but go to that spot, do your work. Um, if you have questions, um, wait till you're through to the end unless it affects how you would do the next thing. Um, and then give me a call. If you have a question, let me help you work through it, okay? Especially on your math, but on other subjects as well. Not that you can't ask your moms or dads or grandmas or whoever happens to be there helping you, but is that really how a normal school day works? It really isn't. Um, you would be asking me. And you also know that I'm teaching often, so you might have to be waiting and be patient. So you keep working. And then once you're done with that activity, um, maybe that way you'll know, like for on your math example, if you finish the lesson, put a circle or a question mark by the ones you have questions on, then give me a call and we can work through them, okay? All right, there's my encouragement and my soapbox plug for today. Um, so first of all, I'm gonna talk about grade three math and grade four, I really want you to listen to this one because it's a review for you and something that would be important as well. So um, for grade three, we're gonna talk about how we use estimation to prove if an answer is accurate or not. And that's always important. Before you go on to the next math problem, you always want to think, does my answer make sense? Does it go along with uh, the work that I've been asked to do? So always double checking what they're asking you to do is important, but then actually look at your answer and you can use estimation to help you with that. So for example, um, I'm gonna use my board here, so I'm gonna come a little bit closer, okay? All right, so for example, uh, we have Anne, and Anne went to the store, and Anne wants to buy three shirts uh, for $28, but then uh, as she's multiplying, she says, oh no, those three shirts would uh, cost me $624, and so she decides not to buy them. Did Anne do that work right? Well, we can estimate. We could do three times $30, because that is... Um, using a rounding, but also a compatible number, something that's easy to multiply with, and that gives us $90. So did she do it right? No, she made a mistake. Can you find the mistake she made? Oh, uh, instead of carrying the two from eight times three up to the top, she wrote it down in her answer. Whoops. So if we do that, 3 times 8 is 24, 3 times 2 is 6, plus 2 more is 8. Ah, $84, that's close to 90. That makes sense, okay? So our number makes sense now. So using estimation can help you know, is my answer reasonable? Did my answer make sense, all right? Joanna, you have a couple other examples to read through in your lesson. And again, if you have any questions, make sure you give me a holler, okay? All right, uh, next let's go into a few things that are for both my third and fourth graders, okay? So the first thing I wanna talk about um, is our Studies Weekly. We're going to be reading um, Wisconsin immigrants, okay, and how they helped to build a state. Remember last week we learned how Wisconsin became a territory in 1836. Well, 12 years later, 1848, Wisconsin is going to become a state, okay? And all of the immigrants that come in, an immigrant is someone who comes into a nation from another nation, they help to build the state of Wisconsin. Now this is the one where you're going to be doing your family tree. Um, you don't have the materials to do that, but you certainly can be gathering information. Um, this week sometime your families are going to come in and pick up more supplies. Um, well, one of the things that they'll get is more math pages. Uh, to put in your binder. The other thing is your hardcover reading book because you're going to be doing some work in that coming up here. Um, and also um, more of your pages that you'll need for Wisconsin Studies Weekly and also your Science Studies Weekly. Alrighty. So along with that, I will include some of the other supplies that you need to perhaps do your report on your chapter book that you were reading in March and also to do your family tree. And remember, you want to be going back um, on each side of your family, both your mom and your dad, until you can find the first relative, your first ancestor that came from another country. So you may have to go back a ways, all right? 
Um, if you remember, as I traveled back, as I did mine, we did this one on the board so that I could give you an example. In my family, my grandmother, Minnie Emma Meta Barfnecht, so my dad's mom was the first one. She was actually born in Germany, and then her family, when she was just a, a small baby, moved here to um, Wisconsin, all right? And she first lived in Ladysmith, Wisconsin, that area. Um, for on my dad's side, the first relative there would have been, um, for his dad, would have been uh, my great-grandpa. My great-grandpa uh, mourning came from Ireland, okay? And so um, I'd have to look back to see exactly when he came. But those are things that you can do and, and you can look up. Um, this week in our um, DT3, we're going to be going and talking about some places that immigrants would have come through. And so you can uh, sometimes, uh, actually, if they came through Ellis Island, you can look and find their name. Uh, for example, I have a copy of, um, on my mom's side, my grandfather that came from Switzerland, Switzerland, and his name is written there in the log when he came to America from Switzerland. So kind of neat things that you can look up with that. So I'll send those materials so you can fill that out and do that work at home as well. Um, there's one other item that you will need to do your work for your studies weekly this week, and that is you'll need both a thesaurus and a dictionary. On the back side, they give you some work to do with a thesaurus. Remember, a thesaurus is a word, uh, excuse me, a book that lists um, synonyms, words that mean about the same, and antonyms, words that are opposite of a specific word. A dictionary um, gives you the meaning of a word and how you would use it in a sentence, that type of thing. So it's possible that you might be able to find some of those um, to use online, but I will also uh, send one home with you. And this has both a dictionary and a thesaurus in it. The dictionary is towards the front in ABC order, uh, of course, and then the thesaurus is in the back. So I will send that with you as, as well uh, to be able to use to do your studies weekly. This will be due on, uh, let's see, what did I see? Uh, April 2nd, okay, and I think I did that wrong here. <gasps> Whoops-a-daisy, April 2nd, okay, so that's due Thursday morning, so you've got some work to do, and uh, we'll talk about when to have the family tree done, okay? Uh, depends when your family comes to pick up those supplies and materials that you'd be able to do that, alrighty? So don't worry about it too much, just start to gather information as you're talking to your uh, grandmas, grandpas, and see what you can find out for your heritage and um, what ancestry do you have, okay? Uh, the next thing that we have then is um, for reading this week, and you're going to have spelling words this week. Um, I did send a, an um, email on Sunday, and so your spelling words were listed there. Um, I would write them in your assignment book, just like we usually do when we, you're at school. Do some spelling city activities on them. Take a pretest on Tuesday after studying the words and working with them a bit, and then take a final test on Thursday. And the final test is the one that I will use as your grade for this week. The words that you have will go along with your story, the printer, all right? And so um, once you pick up your hardcover reading book, you'll uh, be reading on those pages. It starts on page 230. And first of all, it talks about heroes. Who's one of your heroes? I think that would be a great thing to write about. Who is a hero in your life? Um, and then we're going to talk about rescuing people. So you would read the um, story in 232 and 233 about to the rescue and your vocabulary words there. And then also reading your story that's called the printer. OK, but that won't be till later in the week as well. All right, Joanna, that's it for you. If you want to um, stop the video and go from there or if you'd like to listen to grade four math, you're more than welcome to. All righty. Uh, just a couple other shout outs. Make sure that you are doing your DT3 each and every day. Um, make sure you list those resources, okay? And do your good typing, all right? Capital letters, you know how to push the shift key down to make a capital letter. And marks at the end, have complete sentences. Uh, that's part of, especially for third and fourth graders, you can do those things. And those are things that are important. I hope you're working on your edutyping at home as well. Um, and then uh, those of you that still need to, make sure you're reading for AR. And some of the books that I've given you, assigned you on Epic that can help you. Um, to be able to get that as well. All righty, thank you. So now, uh, grade four, we're going to talk about geometric solids. Oh, last thing, moon phases. A few of you have been doing that and sending me that information. Some of you are not. I want you to be checking the moon phases. And as they change, tell me 
uh, or each night, what do we have? Even if you can't see it, you should be able to look it up on a device and uh, tell me what the moon was in our area for that evening. All righty. So now, finally, geometric solids. All right. What's this one here? Ah, easy. Sphere, okay, like a globe, a ball, a baseball, a golf ball. Sphere, all right. No straight edges, no vertices, no points. Completely round, 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 okay. Um, how about this guy? Cube, all right. Notice that every single face is a square. Every one is a square. And this, a flat side, is called the face of a geometric solid. And then where those faces meet, the straight edge is called uh, an edge. The point where they meet, and there might be more than one uh, edge meeting there, the point where those edges meet, that's called a vertice or a vertice if you have more than one. Okay? And that's something that your lesson talks about too, how to count the faces. So here on this cube, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, six faces. Wow, look at all the vertices. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So how many vertices? Eight, eight vertices. Okay, all right. So different things to think about. How many edges? One, two, three, four. One, two, three. I think I counted that wrong. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Alrighty. Um, I still think I counted that wrong. I think you better fix that one for me, okay? I want to keep going though so our video doesn't get too long. How about this guy? Now if you put a sphere of ice cream in there, that'll help you remember this one. It's a cone, right? Cone. Notice how it has that point, one vertice at the top, flat bottom, rounded edges. Alrighty. This guy? Cylinder. Again, any vertices? None. All right, uh, flat circle on the bottom, flat circle on the top, rounded edges, okay? So a face here, a face there. Um, then we have, how about a rectangular prism? Okay, rectangular prisms. Now, yes, on this one, this side is a square, but we remember a square is a rectangle as well, all right? And then the other shapes are rectangles, okay? Rectangular prism. Um, then we have a triangular prism. Now notice with this one, you've got two faces that are triangles, and then for each edge, you have another face that is a rectangle. So you'd have three faces that are rectangles, and then two that are triangles, okay? So a triangular prism, different than a rectangular prism, okay? Different, all right? And then we have a pyramid. Now, a pyramid is also different than a triangular prism, and you don't want to get those two mixed up either. i got to get my things coming over into the right spot. All righty. So you can have a triangular bottom and then three sides coming up to a vertice at the top, or you can also have a um, square bottom, and then you would have four triangular faces coming up to one point at the top, okay? All right, so read through your lesson. It talks to you about um, vertices, faces, edges, how to count them, that type of thing. Um, there also is an activity there. If you'd like to do it, that would be great. You look around the house um, for each of the shapes and see if you can find them. Boy, extra challenge. If you can find something that is a pyramid or the triangular prism, yeah, those are hard to find um, in real life, uh, just in your in your home. But maybe you've got something. Or maybe it's a picture outside of something that you have. Uh, but go ahead, if you have things that are small enough that you can um, put them all in a group and take one picture of it and then um, tell me what each thing is, which geometric solid it is. All right? That's our lesson for today. Uh, remember, as you're doing your work, work independently. You can do it. All righty? Use your good thinkers. Um, if it helps you to read your problem out loud, but then uh, when you're done doing your work, read over your problem again. Did you answer everything you needed to? Uh, finish your lesson. Once you're finished, if you have some questions, put a little dot or a mark or something by it, give me a call and we'll go through these. One last thing, if we could think about your power-up. On your power-up today, you're given a, a new um, 
strategy when you're multiplying, and it is to um, do double a number and then multiply by half the next number. And always think about what would make it easiest, okay? What would make it easiest? And oftentimes, it's doubling the smaller number and um, having the larger number, but not always. For example, look at letter D. On letter D, I believe you have 50... Yep, 50 times 24. Okay, so if I have, if I, I do half of 50, that's going to be 25. And then doubling 24, that's 48. That doesn't make that easier at all. Okay, so on that one, we would double 50, double 50 to make it 100. And then we would have the 24 to make that 12. And then that's really easy to multiply, isn't it? Okay, so just an idea there. And then you'll notice in your problem solving, this is one where you can use that tree diagram again. Okay, you can use that tree diagram again. If it's important for you and you have questions on it, give me a holler. I'll be more than happy to work through it with you. Okay, all right, have a great day. See you soon.